Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, today I am bringing you a special video that a couple of you had a good idea about requesting this one, so I said, fine, we'll make it. And that is the top 10 tech to buy with your tax refund. Now before I get started, I too want to specify one thing. I'm going off of the average tax refund. The average national tax refund is $3,120. That being said, I'm a big believer in learning from what my mistakes were as a kid, and that is that I've been working since like I was 13, and I did corporate jobs since I was 16. So definitely I'm a big believer in putting away half of your tax refund away for savings. This allows you that when you move out or whatever, or if you're, you know, if you're already moved out or you're doing stuff, you have a savings nest egg for any kind of emergency or anything that happens. So that's my full disclaimer for your tax refund. And now we'll get to the tech that you're getting for fun. You not necessarily might need, but you definitely want. And so the budget for all of these is about 1,560. So all of these are under that, uh, since that's again, the average half. By the way, if you're not getting that much, don't feel bad, I pay every year. Sucks. All right, now let's get started with uh, the first one. So uh, I did a top 10, and I think, you know, in terms of top 10, number one is the one that most people will get going to number 10. Some stuff you might not think of. 10, by the way, is one that I would absolutely love to get. So make sure you stay tuned for all 10. All right, let's get on with the first one. And the first one is a new smartphone. Now, most of you are going to choose between these specific two, and that is the new Galaxy 8 that will be announced on uh, March 29th, or the LG G6, which is coming out April 7th, I believe, the first week of April. Uh, and these will range between 650 and 750 for them. Now, the S8 Plus might cost a little bit more, so know that, uh, but that's the price range you're going between for a new smartphone. So this can go along with buying this and something else on this list, so keep that in mind. I tried to make it so you can buy two of these things, uh, depending on how expensive they get. So you can buy this and one other thing here. So I think this is a really good one to keep in mind. A new console, number two. Now, this one's really uh, big, obviously, the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you have watched my video, you know I do advise against buying this console currently right now, but if you get your tax refund in April, if you're getting it later, look, there might be more games rolling out that you might want. As of right now, I do not recommend buying the Switch just because it's not worth it, in my opinion, but as games come along, it definitely might be worth it. By the way, I found out that the Nintendo Switch controller does work for Android phones and tablets. Sorry, iOS users, it does not work for iPhone. But because it does, I will do a video on how to pair them. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but so the Nintendo Switch with accessories and games can run you from about $360 to $700, depending on how many controllers you get, the charging stand, the pro controller, the games, you know, buying probably three games will get you to the 700 mark if you buy all of these uh, products. And that's not including, of course, you're gonna wanna get a 256 gig memory card so you can store all your games on the go. And please, Nintendo, bring a virtual console so I can buy this. That being said, we're going to number three. Now, number three is probably the most popular thing to buy and that is a new tv if i know most of my friends uh they tend to use their tax refund on buying a new tv so sorry just had to move myself a little bit so uh that is probably the biggest purchase that i would say most people tend to buy with their tax refund now here's the thing you have to keep in mind with this and that is that overall with the tax refund you're going to want to spend on a bigger screen TV most likely. So I'm giving suggestions for certain products. Doesn't mean you have to buy these for this category. Again, just to give you ideas for the products. And I give you a model number to look up if you want this specific version. Now, if you're buying it, HDTV, you're going to want to get a 4K with HDR. This is more of a future proofing your TV for all content down the line from five to 10 years from now. I don't know how many of you guys switch TVs out more quickly than that, but typically you want a TV at least five years. If there's nothing wrong with it, you don't need to really change it out unless you're like me and I always need to change out things. But 
That being said, you do have the ability to get this one. This is a 4K TV from Samsung. It's a 55 inch model and it does have HDR. Again, HDR isn't a tech that's really predominant right now, but you will want it down the line. So just note that, that overall, you will want this down the line for it. And it's a good idea to get it now so that you're ready for it when you need it. All right. And this will be from 800 to 1,200, depending on the screen size you get. If you get a 40 inch, you're closer to 800. If you're getting a 60 inch, you're closer to 1,200. And obviously it can go higher. And now we go on to number four, another thing that a lot of people tend to buy, and that is a laptop. Now with a laptop, you are going to go one of two routes typically, and that is an Ultrabook or a gaming laptop. Now, what is the difference between the two? Well, Ultrabooks are more portable, easier to carry, take around more easily, have a longest battery life out of all laptops. So one that I recommend is a Dell Inspiron 13.3 inch with an i7 processor, 12 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage at 899. That's a hell of a price for all that you're getting there. Now, I haven't tested these models out specifically myself, so please note that. But what I was looking for was the best bang for your buck under a thousand dollars that would give you everything you need for an ultrabook and this is definitely one you should consider now for the gaming laptop side i did go with this hp omen that is their gaming series line it has a um gtx 1050 so you can even do vr with this one that's how high end it is eight gigs of ram i7 processor and it does have a, a terabyte drive which you would probably want to switch that out for a 256 gig solid state to be honest but it's up to you i always believe in getting solid state over a hard drive because quite frankly hard drive technology is just outdated and this would run you anywhere from between 600 and 1200 depending on how high end of a laptop you want to buy now for number five it's actually a really fun category and that is setting up your home as a smart home so this is the smart home setup and these are five products that you would want to get. The first thing you would want to get is a voice assistant, either Google Home or the Echo Dot. This will allow you to control your house with your voice. As most of you have seen, I've done this plenty of times with my uh, home appliances, so I can do, hey Google, turn off the office lights. Sure, turning two lights off. And that goes that easily. Hey Google, turn on the office lights. Sure, turning two lights on. Now I can also do this with my TV. I can do this with plugs in the house. And how you get this set up is by buying multiple items. Now, depending on what you want to do, these are the kits you want to get. Uh, the Philips Hue on the bottom left is probably the best starter kit now that I realize. There is a $200 one instead of the $70 one, and that allows you to do color lights, but I realized after using it, I'd never really use the color lights. If you want to be one of those YouTubers that is so unique and has a background with color lights, then be my guest. I really don't care for it. I really have never used the color light, so I recommend just getting regular bulbs. They're a lot less expensive, and you can even get them for, I think, as cheap as 20 bucks for LEDs. That's not bad price, especially when they're all smart lights. There are cheaper out there, but Philips just works with more things. Uh, so that would be a good one to start off with. A Wemo switch turns anything into a on and off switch. So I recommend this for something like a TV, especially a smart TV, really good. I actually have that for my Roku in my bedroom. I just say um, to Google or Am or the Echo, turn on the turn on the Roku and it turns on my TV and it puts it on Roku. So just that simple. Now, if you want to get uh, a TV that has multiple things connected to it, say like a living room, then you would want the Logitech Harmony Hub. This will allow you to change all your inputs, everything. So when I want to change something on my TV, I actually just tell it what to do. So I can say, um, hey, uh, turn on Android TV, turn on regular TV, or turn on my PS4, and it does all those things. So it's really great for all those purposes. One that I do not have because I live in an apartment is uh, the Nest Thermostat, and that is really great. I wish I could have something like this. It's a really great feature to be able to, as soon as you come inside your house, it changes the AC on to a certain temperature because it's the temperature you prefer and you set. That's really great automation. All of this would cost you between $400 and $800, depending on how much you want to get. And that Nest is pretty damn expensive. 
Number six comes from a new tablet. And really the tablet that most people would want to get this uh, upcoming month is the new Galaxy Tab S3. The tablet does come with quad speakers. It's the first OLED tablet with HDR. And you also get an S Pen that comes with it, which is really nice. Type-C connection, headphone jack, all of that built into it but you can even separately purchase a keyboard case that it docks onto and really get your productivity done. It does come with full Microsoft Office, not that uh, you know 365 Office, you have full Office on there uh, that comes with Samsung if you get it from the Galaxy App Store. So definitely something you should get. This goes between $500 and $700. The reason I say that is because we don't know the price point yet. I'm assuming the base model will be 500 and the LTE model will go up to 700, but Samsung has not confirmed the pricing on this yet. And we don't know when this will come out. My guess is it will be April though, who knows. And as for number seven, we are going to go to computer upgrade. So if you are a tech like me, I built my computer and every couple of years you wanna upgrade some parts. The three biggest parts to upgrade are the graphics card, the storage and the RAM. So this can run you varying degrees. Uh, if you get the newest, biggest, baddest uh, graphics card on the market, the 1080, you're going to be spending about four, $400 to $500, depending on which variant you're getting. Um, that being said, you can also, of course, upgrade your RAM. It allows you to do multiple things at the same time. I myself have 16 gigs of RAM on mine. Uh, and you can get solid state. I have 512 on mine. I do recommend if it's a first time upgrading your computer, get Samsung uh, solid state drives. Not only are they ranked as one of the best out there by far, but you also get the easiest transfer to transfer over everything. It mirrors your entire system, no problem. There's no issues with it. So definitely do that. The migration is better than anything else that I've seen. And I've used about three or four different solid states over the couple of years and Samsung so far has the best software as of now. All right, that being said, this will run you about 600 to 1200, by the way, depending on, again, how high end you wanna go. Number eight goes for those people that want to do something like a YouTube channel, like I do, or just if you want to take photography or anything along those lines, um, and get the best out of it. Really, mirrorless cameras are the way to go nowadays. I'm, I am was a true believer in SLRs back in the day, but mirrorless cameras are just doing, especially video, much better than SLRs at the same price range now. Obviously, photography is a whole other subject, but if you want to do that videos and you know doing vlogs and stuff like that, then you wanna go with some of these. Now, the reigning king right now is definitely going to be the Sony uh, A6300, it's just the best overall current uh, model uh, I would say you could buy right now. However, that being said, you are going to want to take a look at the Panasonic G7, which is actually the model that I use. So if you're wondering which one I shoot with, I shoot with this bottom camera right here, the Panasonic Lumix G7. I am going to upgrade to a GX85, uh, which is the other one that I'm suggesting. Um, this year, which it does have better stabilization, better low light, uh, and a lot of other things that are way better. Uh, but these will range from $600 price point because the G7 is $200 on sale right now at Best Buy. And it goes all the way up to $1,200 if you want to get the higher end A63. Now it's also $6,500, but $63 will be good for most users. Again, these are the two top ones that most uh, YouTubers would recommend if you're doing vlogging or if you just wanna do some really good quality videos, 4K, 1080p at 60 frames, you have this ability to do on both of them. Number nine, we're getting some more different ones. It was kind of hard filling out the last two, I will be honest, uh, but this one is a really good one if you wanna update your current car, and that is a smart car dash. So what I mean by a smart car dash is it turns your car into a smart car dash uh, so that you get a new dash receiver. And this will have both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay built into it. Now these range between $400 and $1,200 depending on how good of a quality you wanna get. Now this will mean the resolution's gonna be good or okay. 
Also, it de uh, depends on how good the touchscreen is. This is something that I do recommend going into the store to check out if you get the chance, just so you can really make sure the touchscreen is good because some of them are not good touchscreens. So please note that. Uh, this one is one that I do recommend though. It's a really good model. It is actually $200 less right now. So it's only 700 right now. It's going for 500 and that is from Pioneer. It's the 4200, uh, or sorry, yeah, 4, uh, 4200 series and really good overall. This is a better touchscreen than the lower end ones. So this is one I would recommend for you to get. Also a better resolution than most in that price range. And number 10 is one that I cannot wait to get for myself, although I can't get it yet. And that is a custom arcade cabinet. Now you might be wondering what the hell does that mean? It means you can literally have your own custom cabinet that you can connect your Xbox to, your PS, uh, your PlayStation to, a PC you can connect to, and you can connect this with getting whatever emulator you want. So you can get Super Nintendo emulators. You can get M-A-M-E, or MAME, emulator for all the old arcade games, and you can literally set up a amazing display that you can have with this. Now, I will leave the link for this in the description below because it's kind of harder and it's not something that everyone knows about, but this is something that I cannot personally wait to get. It's definitely my favorite of everything that I could buy with my money from my refund, if I got a refund, but uh, I cannot buy this until I buy my wife a house. That was our deal. As soon as I get, uh, as soon as we get a house, I get to buy this. Raise money for Android, uh, for a YouTube tech guy to have a house? Uh, so yeah, so really great uh, when it comes to that. The stuff you can customize uh, these arcade cabinets with is just amazing. I definitely plan on having like every system of old, you know, from N64 to any, and you get the Joy controllers, that, or not the, I'm thinking Joy-Con right now, uh, but you get the joystick controllers that really were perfect in the arcade days. And I loved arcades and I like to have get togethers. So this would be cool when my friends would come over, we would play with, we would play on the arcade. It is the best thing. I would love to get this. It is definitely a goal of mine to one day have one. I've always wanted one all my life. And this is the one that I want to get someday. All right, guys, hopefully this list really helps you out on what to use with your tax refund. Now, again, make sure you guys, please, please, save some of it. Trust me, I did a lot of spending when I was younger in high school and college. I could have saved up a lot more money than I should have, and I spent a lot. I got to enjoy a lot of things, but in retrospect, you definitely should save some of it. Uh, my recommendation, by the way, for savings is something like a money market. Uh, those probably give you the best interest at around 1% uh, interest, but those you can also pull money out if need be for an emergency. So look into those uh, for your savings needs. The R-I-C-K-Y, the finance guy? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate it. If you like this video, or if you know someone that could use this video for their spending on their tax refund, or that needs to hear that they should save some of their tax refund, send this video to them and make sure they see it. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y the YouTube tech guy.